You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for January 10th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, also known as Imminent Threat Headquarters, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. You know, we, we worked really hard in the last few months of last year to rope in a new sponsor. Uh-huh. Um, and we've gotten one to underwrite this entire show. A new fake uh, sponsor for the entire a, show? A new fake sponsor. So uh, all you old fake sponsors out there, you got to up your game because this one's really good. They they are they are marketed well. They know exactly who their demographic is. I predict big big sales for these people. Uh, we are proudly sponsored this week by Fifth Column Vodka, which is aged in Iraqi war drums for seventeen years. Fifth Column Vodka celebrates that time each decade when Republicans do something staggeringly reckless in the Middle East and then scream at anyone who asks any questions about it. But they're a dirty liberal who loves terrorists. Fifth Column Vodka. It takes the sting out of being occupied. Every decade, seems mm-hmm. like this happens. Just about. And this time, because we know in advance that the so-called president is utterly untrustworthy about everything. And that yes, he, he lies uses, all the time about everything. He uses his Secretary of State and his uh, Secretary of uh, the Treasury, etc., mm-hmm. as buoys you know out in the ocean to protect him from crashing into anything so they are yeah. all there to lie for him and look mm-hmm. ridiculous and don't don't forget his attorney basically everyone who works for him his attorney general mm-hmm. all the secretaries of all the cabinet departments are all hacks and frauds and traitors and criminals and oftentimes idiots right we've all been on pins and needles for three years hoping that he wouldn't do something reckless and start world war three I see this as personally as domestic terrorism against the United States population. Oh yeah. In order yeah. to manipulate the election. That's yeah. what it is. And I tweeted out a couple of days ago about did you lose sleep this week wondering if World War Three was gonna start? Yeah. And I got a massive response of people saying and and it doesn't surprise me at all. My sleep was disturbed, your sleep was disturbed. People are justifiably horrified yeah and terrorized by this and so i think it's clear that we have to walk over glass to vote this guy out yes we do and i don't think he realizes how mad women are i don't think he realizes how mad people who care about this world are at him right now well why would he i mean he's yeah. he's a malignant narcissist who yeah, only right. the only person that exists in the universe is him mm-hmm. and his appetites um, mm-hmm. And everyone else is there to serve them. And so why would he care what anyone else thinks? Everyone else is an idiot. I mean, he's president after all. He's He won. Mm-hmm. I'm the king. I get to do whatever I want. I get to have two scoops all day long. Hey, blue gal, who did this and when? Liberals saw the savagery of the 9-11 attacks and wanted to prepare indictments and offer therapy and understanding for our attackers. Conservatives saw the savagery of 9-11 and the attacks and prepared for war. That was Carl Rove in 2005. Uh-huh. Carl fucking Rove in 2005, 15 years ago. This is a nerve that they step on every time they need to do something horrible in the world. Every time they need to open up a free fire zone against their critics. Remember, this is let's take Donald Trump out of the picture. Those of us, I did a lot of rooting around in my archives this week, much less writing than sort of looking back and uh, saddened by the number of bloggers, most of whom have dropped out in the last 15 years or passed away. But just the, the history rhyming portion of this, we all got into blogging after Bush got reelected or just before Bush got reelected right around that time. Cause we couldn't believe that this country would reelect someone who was so manifestly incompetent and whose vice president was so manifestly evil and who surrounded himself with such manifestly awful criminal torture mongering beasts Mm -hmm. and yet this country did and the the reason it did is because they took a legitimate 
the legitimate tragedy and patriotism of this country after 9-11 and used it like a bludgeon to get whatever the fuck they wanted. They got their tax cuts. They got the war they wanted, which had nothing to do with 9-11. They got to enrich everyone that Dick Cheney ever loved. They got all the oil. They got everything they wanted, including turning the White House into a sniper's nest to take out liberal opponents. Every time anyone opened their mouth to, to criticize George Bush in any way, it was because you hate America and you love terrorists. And that's what they learned. What Republicans learned from George Bush was that if you have a sufficiently large tragedy, a sufficiently large boom goes someplace in the world, you can use that as a political ATM machine mm -hmm. that's bottomless. You can cash as many checks as that you want. And that's the only thing Republicans learn. And what nobody learned except liberals is if you let them get away with that, they'll do it again but worse. Mm -hmm. and now we're living with the consequences of the fact that none of the Iraq war criminals, none of the Iraq war pimps, none of the enablers, none of the people who lied us into the wrong war, none of the people who broke this country's back, who destroyed the military and who drained the treasury, none of them paid one fucking iota of a price for any of it. Right. Bill Crystal is still out there doing just great. David Brooks still has a column in the New York Times. David Frum is the fucking senior editor at The Atlantic. These fucking monsters were allowed to walk because these monsters all have very mm -hmm. good friends in the media who let them get. So we decided, well, okay, right. maybe they've learned their lesson. <laughs> maybe they've learned their lesson. Maybe Republicans could just, having had their noses rubbed in the fact that everything they believe is wrong, everyone they believe, everyone they trust is a liar, and all their foreign policy is, is, is a disaster. Maybe they've learned something. Oh, I think they have learned something, which is you can skip the research part of your lying. Right. Just make it you up. Don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to like come up with believable rationales. Aluminum tubes and yellow cake and whatnot. No, yeah, just. <laughs> imminent threat. Yeah. It was an imminent threat, but not really. Um, they were going to attack one embassy today. It's now four. Yeah. With no proof of any of it. And what they know, what their secret weapon is, is that 45, 50, 60 million Americans are, truly are, reprogrammable mm -hmm, meatbags mm -hmm. who will believe anything they're told. Well, and they're told to distrust the intelligence communities utterly. Yesterday. Because Donald Trump and Russia is all a lie. It's a hoax. And it's, it's a just a witch hunt and a hoax. Mm -hmm. And then 24 hours later, well, the intelligence communities can't really give out that information. You just have to trust them. Oh, okay. 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 And, and until yeah. these people are gone. You know, this is toxic waste until mm -hmm. they, until they are under the ground. We're just going to be living with the, the 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 repercussions for decades of mm -hmm. allowing this cancer to grow in this country and doing nothing to stop it, and having a, a mainstream media who is perfectly happy to to fertilize it and cultivate it and help it grow and give it all the shelter in the world. And now it's here. Now the bad guys are here. <laughs> now they're right here in our living rooms, telling us lies every day of the week holding monstrous you know, two-minute hate rallies um, across the country where they scream about, you know, nervous Nancy and pencil neck shift and just lie. They just mm -hmm, lie. And mm -hmm. they, they really are just I, – I, I don't know what they are except Orwellian cartoon characters. And I investors in war stocks. Yeah. I mean, that's well, yeah, really the, it. The people at the top are that. The people at the bottom who keep them in power mm -hmm. are, just, are just cartoon characters out of, out of an Orwell novel. They don't function like human beings anymore. They function as robots function. And their their inputs are entirely from Fox News and hate radio. And their outputs are all blame liberals for everything. Liberals are enemies. Liberals are monsters. And the reason we have fifth column vodka is that Doug Collins yeah. just yesterday went on Fox News to take his dick out and slap it on the desk and say, Democrats love terrorists. And then after he was dragged by social media. Well, and more importantly, uh, Preet Bharara used Twitter to fundraise against him massively yeah. based yeah. on that comment. Well, and, and, and he uh, was, there's several he, Democrats running against Doug Collins. It's going to be a primary. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, there's a, there's fundraising going on based on his comment and it's costing him. So, well, and 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 here's the thing. Preet Bharara 
and mm -hmm. a, a bunch of other very well-intentioned people who apparently do not remember anything that happened before the Trump administration. Yeah, yeah. We're like, have no memory of, of apparently of Karl Rove, Karl Rove yeah. or the entire yeah. Bush administration or Dick Cheney or any of it. Have no memory that this is just who these scumbags are. And, and you can force them. If you hit them in the head hard enough to make their ears ring, on social media, if you drag them publicly hard enough, if you if you humiliate them publicly, who are you talking about? Them, Doug Collins. Uh, yeah, if, yeah. If social media just beats the shit out of him and drags him publicly until until he's afraid to go home or go out in public. Well, and if his can... leading if his leading opponent in the Democratic race says, "Oh wow, I just raised fifteen thousand dollars in two hours," well, or whatever it was. Because my my opponent slapped his dick on the desk, you but, know. But my opponent right? sent out a fundraising letter saying, "I will never apologize." Yes. And then forty five <laughs> minutes later, he apologized. Yeah. So proving that, like any other lower order form of life, if you hit it hard enough, you can change mm -hmm. its behavior temporarily. Right. You can right. make Doug Collins uh, walk his statement apologize. back, right? Uh, for a minute, mm -hmm. you can force them to stop being evil for a minute if you apply right. maximum pressure to them. But they're not going to change. This is just who they are. Who they wired. So when I see Barbara McQuaid saying nice things, you know, it was really nice of, of Doug Collins to apologize. And in, maybe this will gently nudge them in the direction of no, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's not, it's never going to work. You're never going to. This is a different. This is taking a fish and putting it on the land and hoping it will breathe. It doesn't work in this environment. These people are, are, are uh, evolved, wired to only operate in, a, in an environment of toxic lies, filth, depravity, corruption, Fox News and hate radio. They don't they can't digest any other environment. So Drift Glass, I want I'm I'm not trying to pounce on you with any information that you didn't have before. Pounce me. But pounce I, me, but I wanted to pounce on you with some information that you didn't have before because <laughs> I wanted your gut reaction. Really? I am I am a sound editor and I want Drift Glass's gut reaction. Pull my to finger, this. Blue Gal and <laughs> This is uh, this is not as funny as the Wonket that we shared last week. No, but uh, I did find out about this story on Wonket. It is about the Virginia State Legislature, uh -huh. and uh, as you know, as you may know, the Virginia State Legislature flipped to the Democratic side recently. Yeah, and as a result, there's a new Democratic world order in Virginia. Uh, the Democrats have a 21 to 19 edge in the state Senate, and so they are assigning committee assignments. I heard about this. They're changing the name of the state to Soros Land. And... <laughs> As a result, they get to uh, have committee assignments. Cool. And they use the example of the Commerce and Labor Committee, which now has, because of the flipping to Democratic power, now has 12 Democrats and only three Republicans on the Commerce and Labor Committee. Mm -hmm. And the minority leader, uh, Mr. Normant, is uh, shocked and appalled and said a 12 to 3 distribution seems a little disproportionate to me. Right. What was it before? Uh, well, that, <laughs> that's what that's what the majority leader pointed out was that the committee used to have 11 Republicans and four Democrats, mm -hmm. which was only one more. Right. Right. Uh, the majority leader said, we just figured out, figured that this is what you guys preferred. We tried to copy what you did. Yeah. Then another Republican in the state Senate, a Ms. Dunavant, insisted, look, two wrongs don't make a right. So I, I wanted to get your reaction to that. The two wrongs don't make a right. And why can't you be more fair? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Argument that comes from Republicans once they lose. Um, because this falls right into our burn the lifeboats hashtag. Yeah. Uh, as I'm sure I'm quoting Morgan Freeman from Shawshank Redemption. Everybody in here innocent. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, of, once you're fucking caught, caught cold. I mean, just mm -hmm. here's the rules that you operated under. Now we're going to operate under the same rules and you squeal and say, that's not fair. What other argument are you going to make? They have left themselves no place left to run there's no place mm -hmm. left for the republican party but jonestown just yeah. a bunch yeah. of people drinking kool-aid and dying in, en masse because the dear leader you know has, has left them and is sending bodily to heaven or whatever the fuck there's no place left for them to go they, they can't walk back 30 years of the of the depravity they've been wallowing in they can't pretend they can pretend among themselves that it never happened but they can't fool anyone else and the the problem that you have with that is whenever 
these people need to take a step outside of the uh, cave where they've been living and deal with normal people, everything mm-hmm. fails because as as I have described them before, this is the tribe that rubs shit in their hair. These are people who yeah. who among each other just rub shit in their hair and put up and 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 wire their hair up in a, in a gorgeous big strange four masted scooter designs and and compliment each other on how wild their hair looks and how beautiful the shit is, and they they've made a ritual out of their wallowing in their depravity. But Drift Class, David Brooks said this is both sides racing to the bottom. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, and as I have written before, Blue Gal, this is yeah. the, the, what you are watching with the um, Republican Party and especially Republicans in the media, especially the David Brooks, mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. you're watching um, Russian royalty uh, who have been dispossessed of their power. Uh, right. People yep. people like Brooks and Brett Stevens and, and these fuckers in Virginia have been bred to believe that they are privileged and better than anyone else. And when they lose their privilege, when they're taught, when they're cast aside, when they're forced to live by the rules that they've set for other people, they freak the fuck out. And, and then out comes the whole thing. Don't you know who I am? Don't you understand who I am? I'm better than you. I'm royalty. I'm a Republican. I work for the goddamn New York times. I don't have to listen to your bullshit. And that's when you, you see, um, especially the never Trumpers get freak out. When you remind them that, well, where was all your indignation back when, you know, you were inside the tent? They don't want to hear that shit. They really. When you were electing Republican congressmen, you were writing ads for Republican congressmen yeah. based on patriotism. Who were monsters. Who were... Over the Iraq war. And, yes. And where right. was this? Indi- and the answer is, is that they're wired differently than we are. They don't under, they do not understand why they should have to play by different, by the same rules as everyone else. They're aristocrats. They're, yeah, well, and I think they that like Russian royalty and Re- Russian the Russian royal family, mm-hmm. they did not foresee that there would be veterans who would run as Democrats oh God, no. for Congress. No, no, no. they did not foresee a Tammy Duckworth in the Senate. No. That that did not occur to them that you're put you're sending people to war in Iraq, and they're going to come back. And they're not going to be rah rah Republicans. They're not going to be a hundred percent behind George W. Bush. They're not, and they're going to have street cred <laughs> to talk to you about fucking patriotism and serving your country. And I don't think they at all expected to have that kind of blowback on them. I wanted to paraphrase what Wonkette said, and that is about copying what the Republicans did in terms of the distribution of of state senators on committees. Let's hope U.S. Senate Democrats are paying attention. We don't want to hear any bullshit about restoring Senate norms when Democrats regain the majority. We want them to out McConnell, Mitch McConnell. We want to see middle fingers extended, not olive branches. Let's just go ahead and burn every olive tree to the ground. And as far as two wrongs don't make a right, go teach kindergarten with that nonsense. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like, they've won. They won. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. it's, it's really clear to me that no matter what I say or do, no matter what anyone says or does, David Brooks, once again, just getting off on the idea of killing someone in a Middle East country because they were a bad person and how the anti-Trump people are now just as bad as Donald Trump. And Oh, but, but maybe we'll take some time off to talk about humility. Sure. Every now and then. <laughs> this is a guy who, you know. while he was having, while he was dumping his wife, was writing columns about the glories of marriage and how important it is to stay together. He is just such a pathological hypocrite. And pastors and college presidents and CEOs love this fucker. Invite him in. Come and lecture. Here's 50 grand. Come and talk to us about humility. Come and talk to us about, about your spiritual journey. And I don't see any way mm-hmm. to reverse that. I don't see, uh, because what it would yeah. involve, and this is sort of getting back to our actual notes, is lots of people who have are as yet unaffected directly and personally by the fact that the Republican Party is a fascist party, mm-hmm. um, suddenly acknowledging that they've been really wrong about a lot of things for a long time mm-hmm. and risking their comfortable positions in doing so. Right. And they're just not going to do it. Right. Just until the war comes to their doorstep, they're not going to say, you know what, this guy's an asshole. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. If you take it down to our local paper, you know, our local paper is like four pages long. Now. Yeah. The fourth page just, was the op-ed section today. I couldn't believe it. 
and, but they're still like remember to it's very important that they have three and a half people working there yeah. three and a half yeah. reporters yeah. it's nothing it's but they're still clinging to this but we have to have both sides mm-hmm. we have to make sure mark Thiessen has a column in our yes paper. right and we have to publish local crackpots who think democrats love terrorists mm-hmm. so the poison is all the way down to the groundwater there's and i don't I don't see at this moment how you get rid of it other than elections, of course, right. you vote, you vote them out at the political level. But when it comes to the media, there's no election that will get rid of the Schulzberger family no. and the, the blight they have become on this country. There's no election that will get rid of Brett Stevens, no, but no I, matter how badly he fucks up. But there is a 10 year old podcast that's out here and doing something. Yes. Oh, and by the way, Joe Lieberman's back. <laughs> well, and Joe Lieberman's <laughs> back because he works as a lobbyist for defense yeah. contractors. I mean, this is <laughs> this is something that's come out. You know, all these people have paying gigs on the boards of Raytheon and yeah. the military industrial complex. So mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to talk for a moment about <laughs> strategies for staying sane because I've had to find those this week and I haven't yeah. always... I haven't always uh, Me too. succeeded. Um, mm-hmm. I should just snuggling with your wife. Oh, for that'd possible. be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. And we, we went out for coffee yesterday, and that was that was a nice thing to do. Um, mm-hmm. But I have been writing in my uh, notebook. I don't call it a journal because I don't it's, – it's not a bullet journal and it's not a journal. It's just a notebook that I keep stuff in, a brain dump mm-hmm. place. But – I've been keeping a record of trying to do one thing every day this week to make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. And Tuesday I gave blood, the postcards to voters. Postcards. I did 20 yep. postcards to voters. I guess that was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because it takes three mm-hmm. days to do 20 of them. If I sit still and get the addresses on, it's a lot of handwriting because they like them to be, yeah, you know, handwritten. handwritten person to person postcards. And these were for the state legislative election. They're having a runoff in Texas, and this is a race that we can win. And uh, so it, it's important to get postcards out to registered Democrats. Uh, you can join in on that at postcardstovoters.org, I believe it is. But they, if you Google postcards to voters, you'll find it. And it's a good project, especially if you feel isolated from if you're a blue dot in a red state. You know, it is a way you can make a difference. And um, so I'm looking for things to do every day. And if it's just knit a baby blanket for charity, that's what I'm doing. But yeah, yeah, I'm trying to just make sure that I uh, recognize my small role in uh, contributing to good. And that, right. you know, we've just spent 25 minutes ranting against Republicans and it feels good <laughs> to do that. Uh, but at the same well, time, trying to contribute something that's going to make a difference uh, in the in a small way, uh, to me, contributes to my sanity. Even if at times it's just writing, writing, writing for a postcard, that also just distracts you enough to sort of stay yeah. grounded. Yeah, um, it, it's good for you. Uh, and <laughs> so and and going out for coffee with somebody you care about is also good. You know, I, yes. I went out for coffee with my knitting group on Wednesday and I went out for coffee with you yesterday and just getting now, out of the house out. and it was good. We're going out shooting pool next week. We, Oh, we are. Okay. Yeah. You're going to shoot yeah. pool. I'm not well, going to yeah. shoot pool, but yeah. Well, I'll, I'll show watch you, to, you shoot pool. <laughs> I'll show you how to, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you how to shoot pool pretty lady. So how's that? <laughs> First thing you're going to ask me is, got any money? <laughs> got any cash? Got any loose cash? I don't mean like, I don't mean like how much money say Ari Melber clearly owes Joe Lieberman, because <laughs> that is the only explanation why he's having this, you know, husk of a dreadful Iraq war pimp on two days in a row. Right. I right. assume Ari Melber owes. I, I thought he was courting his granddaughter or something. Yeah. But lost a pretty bet. much definitely pretty lost much the entire bet. the entire Twitterverse. From Charlie Pierce on down, going Ari, no, 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 no. and it, but again, this is a, this is another sort of example, a small one, admittedly, of they just don't care about us. They yeah. don't care. This is whatever they're doing uh, on that stage. It has nothing to do with democracy. It has nothing to do with their audience. They don't. They clearly don't give a shit that they put terrible people on the air who who we as their audience despise. And and it's not that we disagree with them. 
It's just that they're lie. They're just – Joe Lieberman has no credibility at all left with anyone that I know of. Mm-hmm. Why would you put him on the air? Yeah. Good question. He's on the list, I guess. I don't know. But I keep looking for an explanation that doesn't make me sad or sick, and I don't have any. Um, I have been entertaining myself this week with, um, as I said, digging through my archives. I, I, I uncovered – Operation Yellow Elephant again, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a delightful uh, effort that took place during the Bush administration of asking those fine young Republicans, especially college Republicans, you know, of draft age, this is your war. Why aren't you fighting? it?" <laughs> and, and they all feel they'd be better serving their country by being a lobbyist. <laughs> I believe I'd serve my country better here fighting liberals. And I'm I, as an unpaid intern supported by my dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, or, or they just, or they just stammer and stutter and and change the subject. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. all, they they were all, all of them, and there's a video of it too. There's, they were all down with the whole. We have to fight them over there, especially Islamic fascism. Mm-hmm. And they all had their talking points there. They were all, they, you know, they had successfully had the brain worm implanted, and they were all repeating the same party line. But when asked a very simple question, you're healthy, you're 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 clean of limb and lung. Um, why aren't you over there? fighting the war that you say is the existential challenge of America. Why are you standing in here drinking out of a fucking red cup, trying to get that girl to suck your dick? And the answer is, well, you know, I'm very important. I have things to, and it's all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And and these are people who now Jonah Goldberg is one of these people. My favorite target this week was Matthew Continetti, Matthew Continetti, who was 12 years old as far as, you know, he was, he was, he is Bill Crystal's son-in-law. Mm-hmm. The reason Matthew Continetti has a job anywhere, the reason you see him anywhere is nepotism. Yeah. Is that he got his stupid Washington Free Beacon wingnut rag funded by an internet billionaire, just like his father in law did. He spent much of his time before he shaved on a regular basis writing books about how Barack Obama was terrible and how Sarah Palin was a secret genius. And then he married Bill Crystal's daughter. And now he's a regular feature on Meet the Press and on on the Joe Scarborough Morning Joe, show and yeah. Morning Joe, yeah. Who and there's, he has nothing, nothing on his resume other than I completely sold myself to the the Weekly Standard Pod, and I will go out and dutifully repeat their talking points. That is literally the only thing he did. But in the middle of the Iraq War, people were asking, you know, why is this? imbecile why is this mouthpiece not fighting for a war that he desperately wants to fight and his answer was just ridiculous so none of these these people all grew up to have jobs in the media and nothing there was no consequence to them and the flip side of that and i'll I'll end with this is uh i went through uh a, a post by a guy named russell king who posted as american dad and a lot of people will remember this if you're old enough to remember. Yeah. If you're old enough to remember the blogosphere in 2010, yeah. you'll remember this American Dad post where he and, just and unloaded was, all of it, right? And this was this was what I uh, the Bayou tapestry of posts. This was mm-hmm. everything that we had all been writing about piecemeal, you know, one at a time, two at a time, all under one roof, all extensively documented, all categorized, all this, these are the seven categories of shit, and you, you can't say X if you do Y. You can't scream about the black guy being president when you did this, and you can't nurture racists. When, and it was all linked, and it was all researched, and it was all – it went on for page after page after page. It was so popular, it crashed the server it was on. Mm-hmm. It, it went truly viral. It went everywhere. Everybody linked to everybody. Everybody sent it to everyone. It was talked about on the air. It was um, – everybody gave it to their friends who aren't online. It was the the comprehensive, thoroughgoing, massive bombing raid on on conservatism, and conservatism should have been destroyed by this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you go through, it, it's long gone now. There's a few places where it's still mirrored. Uh, the comments are like "fuck you, liberal traitor, liberal traitor, blah 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 blah." Liberals are traitors. <laughs> and that, so and fuck that's you. your argument. You hate America. You hate America. <laughs> blah 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 blah. The point being that this guy put an enormous amount of effort. Into into providing the most thoroughgoing case against the conservative movement I've ever seen in my life. And it didn't do anything. It didn't change any minds. It didn't move anyone off the dime. Um, uh, Rick Wilson and Charlie Sykes didn't suddenly, you know, give up conservatism and come to the light um, when they read it. 
everyone on the right just fucking ignored it. It took Donald Trump showing up and 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 all those never Trumpers being on the wrong side of an electoral bet for them to suddenly realize the Republican Party is full of Republicans and oh my God, how did this ever happen? The point being, it doesn't matter how eloquently we write or how massively we pack in all of our invective and all of our proofs and facts. Republicans are never going to change. So if you if you think you're calling them out or you're or you're smashing them or blasting them or whatever, you're not. You're not changing them at all because they can't change. There's there's no way to change them. The only thing we can do is to change ourselves, to galvanize ourselves, and to mm-hmm. go to the polls in huge numbers and to register people like you've never registered people before. You have to drive them back into the sewer because they're they're not going to see reason. They're never going to give up on the shit. If if anything going through 15 years of archives have taught me is that these people are unsalvageable, completely unsalvageable. And they will just go on lying until they're forced to stop lying. And the only way to force them to do that is to vote them out of office and to boycott their products (laughs) and to make sure that if you ever see them in public, go up to them and start screaming at them and make sure that all of their food tastes faintly of urine whenever (laughs) they eat it. Okay. All right. I, I, I want to talk to you then about how do you boycott their products? You, if you advertise on conservative talk radio or Fox News, mm-hmm. you don't buy their stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Period. We're not, you, we're, we're not boycotting what they say when we call them out for it, is no, what no, I'm asking but, you. But um, uh, no, no. You're not the saying way, ignore them. No, no. We're not, no you can't ignore them. But – we are no longer in the forgiving business. I, no I think longer... that's the point. I think that's yeah. the point. They is... had their chance. Yeah. They had their chance. To, uh, in, in 2008, they had a chance. In 2010, they had a chance. Well, and we... this is going to be, this is what, what I was thinking this morning, was that the Democratic icon for the next 30 years is a picture of George W. Bush and Donald Trump side by side and the words never again. Yeah. And that's all it's going to take to get yeah. Democrats to walk across glass to vote. Yes, yes. So I don't think the Republican Party, and, and plus the fact that we I heard this morning that there are actually 2% fewer Trump supporters than there were in 2016 because they've died. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you've you've talked about this, that there's this, this age gap and generational change change is happening oh yeah and no, you know long-term. people under 30 are are first of all we're terrified this week because they've registered for selective service mm-hmm. by applying for financial aid for college so a whole lot of men young men on twitter this week were tweeting about fafsa and, oh gosh did i check that box and well, it becomes very real all of a sudden the consequences of supporting or, or just being – there's no neutrality in this anymore is what right. I'm saying. And, and yep. I am not unsympathetic at mm-hmm. all. I'm very sympathetic to people who think we need to elect the most radical left candidate possible mm-hmm. because we don't have time to piecemeal fix right. education and then energy and then the environment and right. then politics. We have to just bulldoze all of that and rebuild a democracy on top of the ruins. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. to we have to change we really do need a revolution. We, we need really to stack do. the courts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Unstack the, the courts by putting more the, people on them. Yeah. And that this, you know, this Joe Biden who I will work for and knock doors for if he's the candidate. This is not an endorsement or not. But Joe Biden who stands up and says, you know, I can work with Republicans. Oh. After after Trump leaves, you know, I just like I I I I hope I know why you're doing that. I hope you're doing that because there's some idiots in in Iowa and and New Hampshire and Ohio, yeah, and Ohio right. who believe that, who actually fucking believe that, mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. appealing to them. I mean, uh, Joe Biden is way ahead in the in the New York Times, Joe Scarborough, David Brooks primary, uh, which is all about blaming both sides and saying somehow the Republican Party was tricked into being evil by Donald Trump, and they'll they'll sort of come back to the light once he's gone. Barack Obama and the Obama administration waited eight years for the fever to break yeah, on the Republican Party. And the whole purpose of the Republican Party for that eight years was to block and obstruct the first black president because he was a Democrat, period. Right. And it only got worse. Yeah, Pretending and it only got pro- worse. Yeah. Trying to get Republicans to behave, trying rewarding good behavior, begging them to cooperate only makes it worse. What you have to do is amputate the limb. 
Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. disease. You, you can't pretend you, we need, honestly, we need Democrats, candidates who run with the same kind of confidence in calling Republicans traitors that Doug Collins has, <laughs> who are willing to say, oh, no, the problem with this country is the Republican Party. They're a bunch of diseased racists and, and thieves and liars and monsters, and they're the problem. I, I know I, that I, makes you feel good, Drift Glass, but that's not how you win elections. <laughs> I don't know how you. I don't know how you win elections, Blue Gal. So yeah. I'm free to say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, I don't need yeah. to run for anything. Yes, that's but, true. But that's let true. me ask you that. Let me ask. Let, let me ask you a question. Then is yeah. it true? Is what I said true? Uh, is the Republican Party based on white nationalism? Yes, that is yeah. true. Are they going? Are they going to snap out of it once Donald no. Trump, you know, hits the road? No. Well, then. Um, then why <laughs> why are people pretending that they are? Because there are a whole lot of voters who are more concerned with Jeopardy and Masked Singer than they are with politics day to day. And they don't want to be mean to their neighbors. They don't mm-hmm. want to have uh, politics get between them and going to church or going to the hairdresser. Right. And so they they want to they they may vote uh republican because their dad did you know mm-hmm. and and that's why they do it or because their church says they have to do that although i think that's unconstitutional and they should have to pay taxes <laughs> churches yeah. that do that should have to pay taxes but uh you know that this is what they've always done and so mm-hmm. to to i see the temptation to nudge them out of that rather than denounce them as forever lost because they voted for Donald Trump. I, I agree. But, and, and no. here's what I, I would like to ask you. Mm-hmm. And I mean this sincerely. I don't right. Mean, no, this is a good conversation. It is. You don't need to have all these answers. I mean, right. I, I'm okay. really, but I'm kind of at a loss here because I know that that's what some arbitrary fictional person or, or imaginary person out there at DJ's diner, um, wants to believe or mm-hmm. might believe, you know, mm-hmm. my friend who I grew up with, I went to, I went to Lanphier high school with them and they've always been a buddy and, and they, they wear a red hat now. I don't like it, but I don't want to hate that guy. Mm-hmm. I, I do understand that. Right. Now we had an eight year experiment in trying that. Well, and you got to remember we, that the people at, at the diner don't know any black people. I, I understand you know, that. Right. I understand that. But we had an eight year experiment in a president and a party in earnest, desperate, to, desperate for compromise, mm-hmm. begging the right, we'll give you whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You can call the health care program anything you like. Right. You can you can name it after yourself, Paul Ryan. It has to accomplish the following four goals. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to lower prices, increase coverage, uh, prescription care, and well, I forget what the fourth one is. I sorry, that's my that's my Rick. improve outcomes at the hospital. That's, that's yeah. my Rick Perry. Uh, yeah. Whoops, I don't know. <laughs> so. But, as long as it does those four things, I don't give a shit what you should call it. Call, call it Romney care because that's what it is. And instead of that, they told him to go fuck himself. Yeah. So we had, we really did have a kind of a perfect lab experiment. And what, what would it be like if the perfect center-right Democrat were elected on a promise to work with Republicans across the aisle and never fucking lose his temper? Okay. Never. Okay. And, I'm going to give you a case study. Sure. In what happened this week right? in Kansas. Yes. Which is we have a new Democratic governor in Kansas. Yep. Uh, Republicans in Kansas have fucked up massively. Yes, they have. With Sam oh. Brown back and their yep. tax cuts for billionaires and they destroyed the school system and everybody, including nice, polite Republicans, know it in Kansas. Mm-hmm. They know what yep. happened. <laughs> and this Democratic governor quote unquote, worked across the aisle with the Republican state Senate Mm -hmm. and got Medicaid expansion done. Yep. And I read an article in a Kansas newspaper about how the governor worked with Republicans and this is bipartisan and this is good for Kansas and is going to increase, give coverage to 130,000 people in Kansas who didn't have coverage before. And by the way, the uh, federal government will be picking up 90% of the tab for this. So this is very good for Kansas. Well, that was Obamacare from the beginning 10 years ago. 
Yes, it was. Was the federal government's picking up 90%. And here yes. is the the Democratic governor of Kansas saying, and by the way, the federal government's going to pick up 90% of the tab for this. So we aren't being squanderous with Kansas led Kansas taxpayer dollars. We're making sure that we're fiscally responsible, blah, 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 blah. And I'm glad I'm able to work across the aisle with my Republican colleagues to get this done. We're wanna, we're all about getting things done in Kansas. Right. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry. To me, tell Republicans who who colossally fucked up, mm-hmm. colossally fucked up in Kansas, and everybody knows it. Right. You burn the lifeboats. Right. But that doesn't get you to 130,000 people covered. That's true. So, in Kansas, that's yeah. absolutely true. And, Kansas, and, that's, absolutely true. and that's, that's where she went from where they are to doing the most good that she could. I agree. So, and, and, yeah. And, and all that was required was for Kansas to be a lab experiment that went horribly wrong yep. under Republican governorship yeah. and people actually died. And that people got really and, hurt. Yes. Right. And everyone right. knows it. And that, and that you control that state. That state mm-hmm. is a... a, a closed system right at the at the national level yeah that doesn't work yeah that's right because right. at the national level it's those people over there yeah no it's, it's i get the, it. it's the yeah. government it's congress so i'm all for working across the aisle um at local at the local level where you can and and if you don't feel the need to put the boot in to republicans who voted for sam brown back and destroyed their own state that's fine. You're a better Christian than I will ever be. <laughs> um, and well, and me, she I has not... real power as governor yes. to make a decision, right? She yeah. can try to cover 130,000 people. Mm-hmm. And that means I have to say nice words about working across the aisle. And got no she got what she wanted. She got what she wanted, right? I got no yeah. problem with that. Yeah. That doesn't work at the national level. It doesn't because we have uh, Republicans from from – Mitt Kansas. Romney to right. We have we have Republican Senator Mitch McConnell in a yeah. national system who, you know, there there are some states that are never going to elect a Democratic senator. I'm just right. that's just not gonna happen. Right. And 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 there is a national conservative media, a national broadcasting organization called Fox News. Right. There's wall to wall hate radio, and there's the entire conservative infrastructure, and there's a shit ton of money funding it. Yeah. All of which are, you know, crazy Nancy Pelosi and right. Adam Schiff, and they're out to get us. Well, and um, it's going to be I, really interesting to see what happens uh, with this Kansas governor when it comes to redistricting. Mm-hmm. You know, is, does she have any power in the redistricting area with gerrymandering the state legislature and so forth, which I'm sure they're doing? Uh, with with uh, Is she going to work across the aisle with Republicans to make sure there are more Republican seats in the state house? I don't think so. So well, and, you pick your battles, and, you know. And will right? will a a Democratic governor mm-hmm. passing a an important bill that ensures 130 some odd thousand people mm-hmm. um, lead to one person changing their vote at the national level? Uh, you know, I think it might. There there certainly is a lot of fear in Kansas right now because. Uh, Mike Pompeo is not going to run for the Senate out of Kansas, and uh-huh. they're left with Chris Kobach as their nominee. Oof, um, yeah. yeah, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, that's, but and, you know, Mike Pompeo's a Mike Pompeo's a stone cold um, Nazi. Well, I get it, I and, mean, he, and he, but he, for some reason, he's seen as more intelligent and moderate within Kansas than right, Chris Kobach. Chris Kobach. Okay, so uh-huh. uh, I don't know who the Democratic nominee is going to be for Senate in Kansas, but mm-hmm. I know that Mitch McConnell is scared. And this is the this is the Roy Moore election all over again. Yeah, that's you know, true. in Kansas. So, yeah, I think it I think some votes definitely changed in the governor's race in Kansas over what happened with Sam, Sam Brownback and how the schools were just devastated. And uh, I do think teacher strikes change hearts and minds and make things right. different. So, Good point. um you know, right, I'm, so let's, I'm not let's, sure. Let's, I'm not trying to be. I I agree with you. I am 100 percent burn the lifeboats with some of these yeah. fuckers. I really am. At the national level, uh-huh. I think we can. At the at the local level, I think you and I actually agree mm-hmm. that if you can find a way to build coalitions to solve local problems right. that involves giving some credit to people, and believe me, I do this at a he, very he very does local do this. level. I'm not. Um, <laughs> you do. You absolutely and, do. And it 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 is. 
I'm always in a quandary about where the line is. I know. You know, there's know. there's a stretch of road that we want improved. We right. will work together to get that stretch of road well, it's improved. It's actually dangerous to walk along the side of the road, and we need right. to do something to fix it. Right. And, and you now need we Republicans have... to vote in their city council or in the state legislature to get the money to fix this dangerous road that's harming kids because right. and, and, and motorists, right? I mean, and it's dangerous for everybody. So yeah, and you, it's... you make it happen. And, but once you once you leave the local uh, level, and mm-hmm. you you move on, to, and the local level is the is the um, is the uh, what do I want to call it? The farm club yeah. for the national yeah. level. Once you get above local concerns, once you move from um, the mayor of Springfield mm-hmm. up to Rodney Davis, R- you cross a very Rodney clear Davis, yeah. congressman Rodney Davis. You cross a very bright threshold mm-hmm. between. Uh, potholes and um, schools to fascism. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's really, and the problem that you have is that p- there are people who, who will work with you to pave a road and will also work against you to keep Donald Trump installed in office and fucking this country up. Mm-hmm. And it's the same mm-hmm. people. And that's mm-hmm. a real, and they don't see any difference between the two. They yeah. don't see any, any they're, they're, to them it's just, well, I'm just a Republican and, and, and Democrats are evil. I can work with Drift Class because he's a local guy and I know him personally. But we know that Democrats love terrorists and Democrats right. are responsible for everything. And especially and, and, when you're dealing with international diplomacy and war and right. so forth, which is totally abstract to everybody. I mean, it, except for people that have been boots in the ground in Iraq, it is an abstraction that you're talking about. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I think we uh, we agree – that at the local level, do what you can. At the national level, put the boot in as hard as you can. Well, and and then and then there's the national pundit level, which oh. <laughs> don't, don't get me started. Well, you already did get me started. We already so. did get you started, and I yeah. think I think you have to separate. We we often talk about this having to separate uh, holding elected officials accountable to right. people who clearly have zero accountability, like David Brooks. You know, yeah. and that is that is the totally frustrating thing. I, I will say one thing that put a smile on my face this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say that with a great deal of sarcasm dripping from my voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, was Rick Wilson writing about how the Republican Party now just immediately forgets the past? <laughs> the, the party of Trump just has this whole thing where everything is always year zero with them. They never remember the past. And oh my God, you have to just agree to forget what happened in the past if you want to be a Republican now, says Rick what Wilson. Who did he make? <laughs> says Rick Wilson, <laughs> whose entire post Republican rat fucking career depends on everyone forgetting what he did or a living up until yes. up until five minutes ago. So yeah, right. I, you know, I, let's, I, let's I, talk I, about Charlie Pierce instead. Cause that's, that's a more pleasant, uh, well, it's not really, let's pleasant. move on to our news roundup. Our and start with Charlie, roundup. Pierce with Charlie Pierce. Yeah. Well, Charlie Pierce, uh, bless his heart, harvested some of the choicest quotes from today's story about the leaked internal Boeing messages about their two thirty uh, seven thirty seven Max, what I call the Ford Pinto of the sky, <laughs> um, and these are quotes from internal memos that a Boeing appeared, employees, right? A Boeing employees and or pilots. Uh, quote: This airplane is designed by clowns who, in turn, are supervised by monkeys. I want to be clear as drift class. I am not laughing at the risk of life and limb. Right. I am just sickened by the fact that everyone internally knew something was horribly wrong and the corporation covered and this it up. happens more often than you would believe oh god yeah. yeah um quote i just jedi mind tricked this fool i should be given a thousand dollars every time uh, i take one of those calls i saved this country a sick amount of money quote would you put your family on a max simulator trained aircraft i wouldn't quote i'll be shocked if the fea passes this turd quote this is a joke. This plane is ridiculous. Quote, the best part is we're restarting this whole thing with the 777X with the same supplier and have signed up to an even more aggressive schedule. And finally, quote, Jesus, it's doomed. All right. And yep. my part of the news roundup, Trump lied a very big lie this week, claiming that he ordered the killing of Soleimani to disrupt a previously undisclosed plot to blow up our embassy in Baghdad. Instead, that radical bastion of liberal socialism, the Wall Street Journal, reports that while the Trump administration has justified the order by claiming Soleimani was plotting an unspecified but, quote, imminent attack on U.S. interests, Trump, as president, has privately admitted that the airstrike was related to his impeachment. 
quote, and this is the Wall Street Journal, Mr. Trump, after the strike, told associates he was under pressure to deal with General Soleimani from GOP senators he views as important supporters in his coming impeachment trial in the Senate, associates said. Today, Marion Williamson announced that she's moving her campaign for president to a different plane of existence, a plane in which she is no longer running for president. Two Senate Republicans called the Trump administration's classified briefing on the strike that killed Iranian commander Soleimani, quote, insulting and demeaning, and that Trump's national security team failed to justify claims of an imminent attack. Mike Lee called it the worst briefing I've had on a military issue, while Rand Paul said there was no specific information given to us of a specific attack. I didn't learn anything in the hearing that I hadn't seen in in a newspaper already. What's striking about that is not that Donald Trump and the Trump administration is just flagrantly lying about this. It's the two Republican lapdogs were so personally insulted by it that they bit him in the ankle. That's, that's the part out. that's... Yeah, that's, yeah. Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi told the U.S. to come up with a mechanism for getting the hell out of Iraq. 52% of Americans called Trump's behavior with Iran reckless. Separately, 69% agreed that the attack made it more likely that Iran would strike American interests in the Middle East. 63% agreed that there would be a terrorist attacks on the American homeland. And 62% agreed that the U.S. and Iran would go to war. But not David Brooks. No. Uh, Donald Trump asked South Korea to deliver a birthday wish to his very, very good friend, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Oh, God. Please tell him I like him. Tell him I still like him, even though he's been made a fool of every single time. By and why would South Korea do that? Because you're neighbors. You know, <laughs> you're, you're on the map. I look, it's Korea. <laughs> you know him. He's across the street. Just go across the street. Give him a note from me. Tell him I still love him. Secretary of State Pompeo ordered the U.S. Department of Transportation to suspend all public charters flights to Cuba except Havana and to firmly limit public charters to Havana. This action prevents the Castro regime from using the profit from revenues to repress the Cuban people, he said. And speaking of the Trump goon squad, uh, the New York Bar Association asked Congress to investigate Attorney General William Barr for bias, saying his actions and statements have positioned the Justice Department as, quote, political partisans willing to use the levers of government to empower certain groups over others. The group said Barr had, quote, disregarded his fundamental obligations as a government lawyer to, quote, act impartially to avoid even the appearance of partiality and impropriety and to avoid manifesting biases, prejudice, or partisanship in the exercise of official responsibilities. You can't can't understate how out of norm that is. Yeah. Uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she would send the articles of impeachment to the Senate when she's ready. This week, Donald Trump called on world powers to abandon the very carefully negotiated 2015 Iran nuclear deal because the black guy did it, and instead focus on coming up with a new treaty that would do exactly the same thing, but this time it would have Donald Trump's signature on it. The next one is some good news. Do you want to read this? Sure. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last I name, but who is, Wolf, I, who is Wolf Cookier? Wolf Cookier is a 17-year-old high school student who had an internship with NASA last summer, during which he discovered a new exoplanet orbiting a rare double star system. The TOI-1338 system, which is 1,300 light years away in the constellation of Pictor. Way to go, Wolf. Way to go, Wolf. The Trump administration wants to delay disclosing what the Secret Service spends on protection for Trump and his family when they travel, including, you know, to golf courses, until December, (laughs) which is ironically, not ironically, after the 2020 election. Don't tell him how much this is all costing. It's cool. It's cool. I got this covered. Mitch McConnell told Republicans he has the votes needed to begin Trump's impeachment trial without committing to call new witnesses or admitting new evidence. He is scared to death of what evidence or witnesses would have to say. And I think he's lying. I don't think he has the votes, but that's my personal opinion. The Pentagon mistakenly released a memo that said the U.S. would pull troops out of Iraq. Uh Uh-oh. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Mark Milley, told reporters that the letter was a draft and that its release was an honest mistake. You know, I have, I have, 
written things on my blog mm -hmm. uh, that were mistakes, usually a typo. I transpose a number or a letter. I've never written one that was completely opposite of the policy that we're supposed to be mm -hmm. pursuing and then translated into a language of the people I'm sending it to and then said, oops, I guess I just got that wrong. Font is one thing. But the actual thrust and intent and facts of a memo being completely opposite of what you, you're saying is that's not a mistake. That's that's something else entirely. The Justice Department no longer supports a lenient sentence for Michael Flynn. Well, well, and the unlenient sentence is six months, which is not nearly yeah. long enough. No. Leaked emails from the Pentagon clearly show that Trump personally directed the hold of military aid to the Ukraine. Don't forget and about finally, that. That's what he was impeached yeah. for. Uh, and that's what he's, you know, shooting at things across uh, in the Middle East over to to get people to, to stop talking about my crimes. Yes. Um, speaking of which, the Trump administration is withholding 20 emails between a Mick Mulvaney aide and the Office of Management and Budget official discussing the freeze of military aid to Ukraine. In response to a court-ordered Freedom of Information Act request, the OMB said it would defy the order and not turn over the 40 pages of emails suggesting that the disclosure would, quote, inhibit the frank and candid discussion of the many, many crimes and acts of treason we have committed, <laughs> are committing, and plan to commit in the future. That's now, that is not an exact that's quote. Not an exact that's quote. my <laughs> That's my sort of dramatic interpretation of what they're talking about. But you get the, you get the gist of it. Paraphrasing, I think, is the word you're looking for. <laughs> Artistic license. That's all I'm saying. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitties are Floyd and Sebastian. Now, Floyd is the shy one, and Sebastian is the poser. Sebastian prefers his food freshly poured, but Floyd prefers his freshly thrown. He is the mighty hunter of kibble and truly merciless. Uh, the kibble is always suitably terrified of Floyd's predatory instinct. So that's why on our Facebook page and website, Floyd is fast asleep. <laughs> Because he's very tired. Because he's been very tired. kibble all day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He found a sunny sunspot, and he is not interested in moving or waking right now. And we should probably have a new brand, uh, freshly flung, <laughs> so. freshly flung cat food. <laughs> <Just> throw it. <laughs> you know, because that's how you hunt it. If it's mo if it's moved in the past three Whoa. seconds, you got to hunt it down. <laughs> Freshly poured cat food is our fake sponsor. If you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat or quote unquote hunt is only freshly poured, freshly flung. You can visit Floyd in his sunny sunspot or Sebastian, who is posing as a beautiful black kitty at our Facebook page or website and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Next week is our 10th anniversary show, Drift Class. Wow. I know. 10th anniversary. 10th anniversary. Uh, we would appreciate hearing from you. If you would like to send us an email at proleftpodcast at gmail.com, we will be reading some of your letters on the air next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, it's not too late to get stuff in. Anytime before Friday morning next week, the 17th, is is fine with us. It's cut off. It's the cutoff date. It's, uh, if you want, uh, if you want to be part of the like decade recorded. of service, the decade of service podcast, you got to get in now. Decade you gotta, you gotta of in early service and get in now. podcast. Yep. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website proleftpod.com for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. And you can just say, look, this podcast is 10 years old. It's been around ten for years. 10 years. 10 years! Well, I mean, this is our, today is our, by my count, 528th Eight, episode. Yeah, yeah. So do the math, people. 
<laughs> divide by 10, what do you get? So yeah, 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 yeah. Divide by 10, you got 52. We've been doing it every week for a long time. So uh, we're grateful for you to keep listening to us and, th- and supporting our show. Thank you. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue gal, the Internet Kitties are not interested in your 409k plan, Donald Trump. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.